You ready to do this, Matt? Yes, sir. Punch it, Chewie. Welcome, super friends, to the Fortress of Nerditude podcast, a safe place to talk about all things in nerd and pop culture. I'm Spencer Stapleton, and my co-pilot is Matt Shaw, where two nerds that just refuse to grow up. Thank you for joining us. This is episode 148. We release every Thursday morning. You can find us on our website, fortofnerd.com. We have links to iTunes, Google Music, Spotify, YouTube, Stitcher, and everywhere podcasts are available. Stop by and relax a while. If you like what you're hearing, hit that subscribe button and get us automatically each and every week in your ear holes. Matt, it's been a week. How are you? I am so good. I'm so good. I love having a broken foot. It's like in my top five things that I love about everything. I keep forgetting you have a broken foot. Because in my mind, I, I still think you can play kickball. Yes. Well, I mean, I can. I just have to hit a home run because there's no way I'm making it around the bases in time. Well, I mean, you got like an iron cast on your foot. How could you not hit I mean, a home run? Yeah, because it's on my left foot. I ain't left-footed, uh, man. <laughs> so gonna, Yikes. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, you're going to have to switch it up. It's a foul uh-huh. tip every time. Uh, yeah, man, life is good, though. Life's good. Uh, you know, for having a broken foot, four to six weeks in a walking boot is not a big deal. Not to me. I've, like I said last time, I've had surgeries on both these ankles, and that's obviously like, months and months of rehab and recovery. So this is nothing. I'm out Mm. there doing everything I normally do other than running, which I don't do anyway. So really I'm doing everything I always do. So, uh, yeah, yeah. How about you? How was your week? How you doing? No running, no kickball, huh? Absolutely not. Hmm. Uh, so, hmm. My week has been really kind of up and down. And I'm going to start with the low so I can try to end on the high. Okay. Um, So a a Married to the Games podcast is one of my favorite podcasts. Uh, It's run by a number, just uh, these four guys that are friends of mine. I've, you know, trekked out to their centennial celebrations. And anyway, over in the Married to the Games podcast this last week, Gabe Patillo lost his father-in-law and he was talking about on the podcast, talking about how his wife, Jenny lost uh, her dad and how that was hitting all of them. And like, you know, it was just kind of a hard time. And so of course, like my heart broke, you know, for, for Gabe and for Jenny. And, you know, I've been keeping them in my prayers and thinking about them a lot uh, because, you know, I know what that's like to have a death in the family. And, And it was just like, I don't know, it was just hitting me hard and I was thinking about it a lot. And then I saw a message that on Friday when the podcast released, so this, like, I think his father-in-law had passed and had been almost a week when the podcast released. But then on the day the podcast released, Chris McCracken, another friend of mine who's a host on that show, that day his dad died in a car accident. Oh my gosh. And of course, like my heart just broke for like the second time the same day. And, you know, just hearing that had me thinking about, you know, when I lost my dad 17 years ago, because my dad died in a car accident was unexpected. And so I, I messaged both Gabe and Chris on the same day, uh, just to let them know that, you know, I understand what they're going through. And I, I know the feelings, you know, that they're, they're experiencing and just, you know, that I'm here for them if they need anything. And this podcast and the super friends I know would, this wouldn't be out of line for me to say that they would be here for Chris and Gabe. Um, they just, yeah, just like all weekend long, just like had them on my mind, had their families on my mind, you know, is bringing up old, old, you know, memories and, you know, hard times that we went through when we lost our dad. And so, uh, so yeah, so like the weekend just kind of started off kind of low. Like it, it just mm. was, it just was kind of low, just sad to hear. So, uh, you know, 
our hearts and our prayers here from the Stapleton household, from the Shaw household, from the Fortress of Nerditude, uh, go out to the McCrackens and the Patillos and, you know, may, you know, may you find comfort and peace in the small moments when and where you can and, you know, hold, hold your loved ones close because that's one of the few things you really can do to kind of get you through, uh, those hard times. Um, so, so that happened. And then, oh, over the weekend, I, uh, I decided that I was going to do something once again. And that was, I was going to go into the backyard and I was going to drop more topsoil down and more grass seed. And I'm going to try to freaking be like the sower yeah. in the New Testament and sow some freaking seeds. That good ground. Oh man. My, my backyard has been just like this up and down, like, roller coaster of just like blah ever since we moved into this house five years ago we we don't have a lot of trees so we get a lot of direct sunlight during the summer and it gets hot and the grass just struggles to stay anything but yellow in the Mm -hmm. most of the backyard and then on top of that we have this really high clay content so like the ground like gets really hard packed and like it dries out and it just it gets really really hard to get anything going so uh, last fall and this spring, again, I tilled up a bunch of the ground and mixed in soil with clay and I've been dropping down fertilizer and stuff that's supposed to break down the uh, clay, the gypsum. Hmm. And I went out and I dumped a whole bunch of topsoil in all these areas that are kind of like low or compacted with clay. And I like put a ton of grass seed, I mean a ton <laughs> of grass seed down and I kind of mixed it in and then I put like another layer of, of grass seed on top of that. And so I'm hoping as temperatures are kind of dropping and it's not as hot like today, like the high was like 73 maybe. Oof, beautiful. Um, yeah, it's great weather, but like I'm really hoping to like get these areas watered and continue to keep them moist and try to get that grass seed to start growing here in the next, you know, two to three weeks so that when winter comes, I've got the seed already established, got the roots established. So then come next spring, all that area is going to pop up and we're going to get a lot more grass in there. And then I can just kind of like overseed in the spring to try to help fill it all out. Like it. Love it. Beautiful. Uh, no, man. It was like, <laughs> it was like six hours of work. Yeah. To like, it was just all me by myself pretty much until like the very, very end. Then Brita did help like sweep out the dirt out of the back of the truck that was still kind of there and mm-hmm. finish off a little bit. But like, you know, I had to go get a wheelbarrow because – I've borrowed wheelbarrows in the past and they're all like the cheapo wheelbarrows Mm -hmm. and like they start to get like really like rickety and like they bend side to side. I'm like, I don't think it's supposed to do that. Yep. So I got me a hundred dollar like high end wheelbarrow. And the funny thing was, is my, my youngest son Jackson says, daddy, it says Jackson on the wheelbarrow because it's some like, I don't know, Jackson <laughs> wheelbarrow, whatever. Yeah. And he's like, that's my wheelbarrow. I'm like, heck no, you didn't buy this <laughs> thing. I'm, I'm using it for work, son. So if you want this, you got to come work. He's like, never mind. And then ran back in, you know, ran in. So yeah. So I, I, I feel like I broke my back, um, a little bit this, this last, uh, weekend. Um, and then, of course, like I get to work today and I'm trying to work on my laptop and it's just like throwing all sorts of errors and doing all sorts of weird stuff, stuff it's not supposed to be doing. It's not allowing me to do stuff. And as the IT guy, like <laughs> you got to have one that works. I, ca- I kind of <laughs> have to have one that works. So I pulled up, we had one other laptop that's the same model as mine and I imaged it and I started uh, moving everything over and reinstalling programs. And by the end of the day, I managed to at least get on the new one. And so tomorrow I'm going to go in and re-image mine uh, that I've been using for a while and then just wipe it clean and then rebuild the profile up on it. And I'll, you know, end up giving it out to someone else. Right. Um, so, so yay, getting a new laptop and Fun. I can actually do stuff. That's good. And then, and then of course, uh, Disney Plus actually opened its registration to everyone today. Yeah. So if you're listening to the podcast, it opened up on Monday. So you, uh, it, super friends, if you're listening to this and you want, you want to, uh, 
Oh, you want to get on that Disney Plus train? Like, you need you need to get that thing going. Um, you need to you need to go sign up. Do it now. So do that. That's happening. Uh, okay, the last thing, and this is a personal thing, and I'm I've been very upfront with this. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna continue to be upfront with this. I've been struggling a little, Matt, and I've been struggling with my weight. Mm. So when you and I went on the cruise together, I mean, our families were there as well. Yes. <laughs> but it was it was really just you and I. Yeah. Uh, when we went on the cruise, like I was still very active. I was still like exercising a ton. Like I got up every morning and I walked around the ship and I, I man, I, I was putting the steps in. But it's the whole cruise, and it was like, hey, you can get ice cream at midnight and watch Empire Strikes Back in the movie theater and be yep. eating your ice cream out of your Yeti and stays cold, yep. which is a genius idea. Um, but it was hamburgers <laughs> and hot dogs and what, like, it was whatever you wanted, like, at any time of the night. And I came back and I'd put some weight on. Not a lot, but I put some weight on. And then I started working it back off again. And from, like, about February till about now, my weight's just kind of like, yo-yoed up and down and up and down and up and down and then in the last two months we had the office move and kind of all the work that went into there where i was working like 18 hour days with like no days you know off for like three straight weeks or more Mm. and then all the other stuff and like i haven't figured out like a walking path and like i started eating sugar again and just like my my diet has been crap and i haven't had time to get as much exercise and so I decided this weekend to get on the scale and see how bad the damage <laughs> was. It's bad. Oh no. Like like I'm I'm still down overall. Like I'm still down a ton of yeah. weight. Yeah. But from where I was at my lightest yeah. to now, eh, it's not so good, super friends. Yeah. It's not so good. So today yesterday, really on Sunday, I I was like, okay, I'm eating better. I'm getting back to this no sugar and cutting all that out and keeping carbs low again. And I did that and it was hard and I did it again today and it was really hard today. Mm. Um, But I did get out and I did walk around on my lunch break and then I did get a walk in tonight. And so I'm probably close ish to 20,000 steps today, which is like what I was was averaging before. Um, but like my legs are feeling it. My lower back is feeling it. But I got to the point where it's like, I was realizing that all my clothes were starting to get really, really tight. And I didn't have bigger clothes because I got rid of all that stuff. Right. And that's kind of a wake up call. Yeah. And I was like, okay, I'm like, I've worked too hard. I, I've done too much to, to backslide far enough that I'm gonna have to start going and buying like bigger clothes. Like yeah. that's just, that's just not going to happen. So uh, the last two days, I've recommitted myself, and it's it's a struggle. I've got those Costco chocolate chocolate chip muffins up there that my kids are eating, oh. and like there's everything inside my being want right now wants to drop the headphones, push the microphone out of the way, scramble over there, and devour <laughs> one of those things. But I'm not gonna do it. Yes, I'm not gonna give in. Good for you. But I but I wanted to put that out there because I feel like I feel like I haven't been talking about it lately just not just on the podcast but just in general Mm. and i noticed that if i'm not talking about it and i'm not like actively like talking about my goals or you know at least having conversations here and there with people and i knew that i was eating crappy and i knew that i'd like stopped kind of exercising because of all the work stuff going on and just life has kind of gotten in the way and i'm not making a priority and now i'm not talking about it i feel like i'm almost trying to hide what i'm doing like i'm doing something wrong yeah and so I got to put it out there and I I just got to hold myself accountable. And so my goal is in the next three months to try to work back down to where I was kind of around the time of the cruise. Okay. Which was still not at my lowest, but I want to get back down to kind of where I was around the cruise. And I'm going to be honest. I got to put in some work to get there. Like it's, I, I, it, it's not going to be easy, but I'm, I'm really hoping by the end of the year to be there. Uh, regardless, I'm still happy overall with everything that I've accomplished so far. Yeah. But just man, it, it, I got to live. I got to live for my kids 
and I got to do all the right things for all the right reasons. And, uh, I, I, you know, I just, I got to say that I got to start again. I'm in a better spot. I'm in a better starting place this time. That's for sure. I just, Good. I just have to start again. So. All right. I like it. Yeah. I like so it. So that's a lot. Apparently I had a lot that happened you or did. maybe it didn't happen, but. Did you have anything <laughs> exciting happen to you? I mean, besides no. the whole no kickball championships or yeah, anything? Yeah, exactly. No, it's funny you mentioned that uh, because I went to the doctor and when you go to the doctor, you step on the scale. Yep. She said, how much do you think you weigh? And I said a number and and it wasn't it wasn't that number was it one of those things where like you're like 30 pounds higher than that no, number you're like Goo! thankfully so okay. we got a we have a kitchen scale but i'm okay i'm i mean marriage has having yep. a kid i yep. it's 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 put me in a bad spot i mean it's mm-hmm. yeah i'm not cool with it and uh you've inspired me with your tenacity, <laughs> especially as it pertains to sugars. Cause Jesse is, she bakes, man, she bakes good. And Papa eats what yep. mama bakes. So <sighs> I don't know. I don't know if I ever told you, but really what kicked it all off for me. I mean, besides the fact that I've been saying like, I wanted to be healthier for years. Right. Was that Christmas like two ish years ago? Yeah, two years ago when we were all up in Montana mm. and I realized a couple things about our in-laws. These aren't bad things, but there was a few things that I really, it really came into focus for me is that one, they get together for these big family meals and then they all eat like birds <laughs> and they finish as fast as they can so then they can immediately go to dessert. Yeah. Like immediately, like I'd get together with my family on Thanksgiving and like we would eat and then we would eat again, like a second course, sure. basically, of, of the food. And then, like, we'd clean up everything. And then maybe, like, an hour or two later, then we'd bust out the pies. Right. It was like, let the food digest. Like, But, like, you go there, and it's like a big Christmas meal. And everyone just eats a little bit and then immediately cleans. And then immediately everyone's like, let's get out the pie. Like, I will still be sitting at the table eating the meal. And people are like, we should get out the pie or the cake or whatever it was. I was like... We're still eating the meal. The meal, like, this is the thing. Right. Why are we talking about the dessert? Like, that's the, like, after dinner, like, sure. settle. Uh-huh. I noticed that they they don't do it that way. It's how can we get through the meal as fast as possible so we can get to the dessert? Yeah. I've, I've, I've been married to Brita for over 10 years now. That's just how the Giffords get down. That's right. the way they do it. Yeah. That's not anything wrong or bad. I just grew up a completely different way. Right. And so, I mean, don't get me wrong. I love a good dessert. But like, you know, you don't sacrifice Thanksgiving dinner for a slice of pumpkin pie. Sure. Pumpkin pie will be there. Yeah. yeah. So, that one, I noticed that. Two, it, it was probably maybe like three or four days after Christmas where I realized all the Christmas cookies we had. Mm-hmm. And then we bought pies mm-hmm. and then someone made a cake because it was our mother-in-law's birthday. Mm-hmm. And then they did creme brulee one night. Oh, that was and good. Then, and then they did like pudding or some sort of bread. Yeah. Pudding. Like I started realizing like just if we had just had just Christmas cookies alone, we still would have had a ton of sugar mm-hmm. and junk food in the house. But every day was like, someone needs to make brownies or let's make almond roca bar. And it was just like, yep. it was just was nothing but like bake sugary stuff every single day. Yep. And for me, that was like, I just looked at it and said, I, I can't do this anymore. Like, this will kill me if I continue eating like this. And I'm not blaming anyone except myself. Like, right. I, ha- I have a problem. I, I'm an addict. <laughs> if I start eating sugar, I don't want... I I can't understand people that have two Oreos and put it down. I don't understand. I don't understand that. You eat the whole sleeve. You eat the whole sleeve, if not the whole freaking container. Like milk, boom, boom, boom. I get to the point where it doesn't even taste good anymore, Matt, and I just keep going because I just can't stop. So I'm not blaming anyone other than myself for any of that. But it was at that Christmas when I had that revelation, just like seeing that, and it was like, 
all that sugar. And I looked at my boys and I was like, I don't want that for them. I don't want to continue living my life that way. And that's mm-hmm. what made me make the change. Now, unfortunately, recently, uh, yeah, I've been struggling with that. And so like cutting sugar out this next week and a half, it's going to be rough for me. Sure. Like I already feel like I have a headache and it's due to <laughs> lack of sugar. So. Right. Well, we'll anyway. hold each other accountable. I like I, that I got to be better too. I got to, yeah, yeah, I have, yeah. I've got my own goals and ways I want to go about trying to trying to lose some weight. I don't need to, you know, sell the farm here and get down to where I was when I got married, but I just want to, <laughs> right. get, I just want to lose, you know, 10 or 15 pounds by Christmas and just continue on that track. But high anyway. proteins, high proteins, moderate to high fats, extremely low carbs, no sugar. That'll do it. That will do it. It will also make me unhappy. <laughs> no, not really, because you know what you get to do? You get to barbecue a lot. That's true. That's true. You get a lot of, you get a lot of good meats. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh, anyway, other than yep. that, really not a lot happened this week. We're still in Baby Watch 2019 mode, just kind of waiting for that to happen. We went to Target. We we do holidays big here. We decorate early. We got our Halloween stuff. We decorated the house for Halloween. Emmy was in heaven, and she nice. just... You know, this is really the first time she's understanding holidays and understanding what's going on. And then she's been bugging me this week about getting the Halloween lights up. She wanted lights outside. <laughs> so we put lights on our railing outside the house. Do you ever like do you do the thing where like you buy a few new decorations each year? Pretty much. We buy. Yeah, we go. We go out. And we get quite a few. Decora- quite a few. I'm going to be honest. It's quite a few decorations each year, mm-hmm. especially at Christmas. When, yeah, that can get me in trouble. We we, we do that for Christmas. We don't do that for Halloween. I, I think Brita would like to do more for Halloween. But at, at some point, I kind of had to draw a line and say, hey, like, we have to pick the holiday yeah. because it's just, it's too much and it gets too expensive and mm-hmm. two kids and, you know, all that stuff. Yep. I get it. I get it. I don't have uh, the ability to stop spending money on fun decorations. <laughs> I just, I love it. It just puts me in a good mood, makes me happy. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, that was pretty much it. I trimmed our tree outside, got the trimmer because it was getting real hangy over onto the sidewalk and our path leading to the house. So I went out there with my boot and was <laughs> standing on a chair cutting this thing down. Please tell me Jesse took a picture of that. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. She could. <laughs> <laughs> you should ask her. Here's my husband in a boot, standing on a chair, That's cutting right. down. I'm sure my doctor would be like, that is a really wise decision on a broken foot. <laughs> it's really stable. It's a really smart thing to do. Hold a power uh-huh. tool while you're standing on a metal chair outside your home. Yep. So uh, that was pretty much it. That was okay. the week. It was, and and we're just in waiting, just in waiting. I predict the 29th. So next time we record this podcast, my prediction would be that the baby has been born. So we'll see. Wow. Because that would be Sunday. It's Monday. So we're going to have to talk and make some plans for what's going to happen after you have said baby. Yeah. Because it's going to be a little hard. Like, (laughs) obviously, like if you go into labor this week and you're having the baby, let's say on Monday... You and I probably won't be recording next Monday. No, 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 <laughs> no probably not. Probably but uh, not. I don't, I, I want to try not to miss. I really enjoy it. So I'm going to try not to miss. And if it works out, it works out. If it doesn't, you guys get to hear someone else's uh, annoying voice. The other thing we can do, hear me out on this, is that oh we can make next week an easy week for us. We can schedule a movie club for next week. Ah. And because usually Brita, Brita always joins us for the movie clubs, unless for some reason she can't or, or she's too tired and she just doesn't want to. Right. But we can always have, you know, plan on being the three of us. And then that way, if you do go out with the baby, yep. we have that. And here's what I'm thinking, though. We record that as the movie club and then we just slot that in on the week that you have the baby. There you go. That way we have one in the can. So sure. we'll, let's talk. We'll have to figure that out because we'll maybe have to record that a little later in the week or something. It sounds great. Awesome. Well, I don't have anything else. If you're done with your weekly roundup, I'm we sh- feeling kind of murdery. 
Ooh, you are. Yeah, I'm feeling kind of murdery right now. Is there uh, particular... something we can do to yeah. help that murderous feeling? Yeah, we need to kill some Bothans. Let's do it. I always have to let you know, many Bothans died to bring us this information. Rest in peace, you Bothans. All right, Matt, we're into Rebel Intelligence. We have murdered Bothans once again for that sweet, sweet Rebel Intelligence. Mm. What do you have for me this week? So we've got another streaming service. We do. We have another one in addition to Apple, whatever the crap they're calling it, Disney Plus, everything else. NBC has announced what they're calling their streaming service. We knew it was coming, and it's called Peacock. What a cute Mm. name. So... With this announcement of Peacock, we got a whole slew of original shows and then things that are coming to Peacock. So we're going to run through that just right quick kind of. uh, We've got first, there's Battlestar Galactica, a remake of sorts. Yeah, they're going to they're going to remake it, right? Yes. It again. The next show is a Saved by the Bell, not remake, but reboot. Mm. So get excited to go back to Bayside, y'all, because it's coming back whether you like it or not. And it will have Mario Lopez, Elizabeth Berkley, at least those two. Will be I heard Mark it. Paul Gossler is coming back for it, too. OK, so we're yep. getting a lot of the original crew back. And it's so the synopsis is when Southern California Governor Zach Morris gets yep. into hot water for closing too many low income high schools. Uh, he possesses, hold on, they did not uh, properly do this one. He does something. Here we go. Yeah, they spelled it wrong. He proposes they send the affected students to the high-performing schools in the state, including Bayside High. So it's about this influx of new students and the overprivileged kids at Bayside, and hilarity ensues, apparently, so... Mm. You can tell you can tell by the tenor of my voice how excited I am for this. So let me ask you: You probably were too young for Say by the Bell when it yeah. originally ran, because I know that was like in the sweet years of like junior high and like early high school for me. So I was <sighs> young. I was around it. I watched it occasionally. I couldn't have cared less, to be honest. I mean, I know yeah. who the characters are, and I'm familiar with the basic story and who they are as individuals, but this just doesn't strike me as something we needed or wanted. So, so here's the thing. Okay. Uh, I am, I'm not a big fan of like everyone and their dog coming up with streaming services. I get that like HBO has a streaming service that they're going to come out with yeah. because they're, they're a premium cable channel and they've got a lot of premium content. I get why Disney's doing it because they're a big company that has all their, mm-hmm. all their own content and movies and whatnot. But now we're getting into these things like CBS All Access and right. AMC, I think, is doing one and NBC is doing one. And like, I don't know how long before Fox is going to do one. And, you know, which, of course, you know, the, all the Fox stuff is now going to be on Disney Plus, I guess. So maybe never mind Fox. <laughs> but but it's just kind of like it seems like the whole idea of the streaming services, Hulu, Netflix, Amazon Prime, uh, is that it gave you a place to go where like, all content was in one place back in the day, Netflix. And like now, and that was like the way cord cutters would kind of, you know, get away from television and the cable because they had a place they could go where everything kind of came together. But like now with everyone fracturing and putting their own like original content behind these paywalls and streaming services. Mm -hmm. And let's just be honest. I think Peacock is a horrible name. Mm. Um, I, I get I get why they named it that, but I, sure. I just think it's stupid. Right. Um, I just feel like everyone's taken this just a little too far. Some of the bigger ones, like Netflix, Hulu, Disney Plus, like I get those. Yep. But I mean, the CBS and the NBC. I mean, what's next? Are we gonna, we're going to get a C, CW streaming service. Mm, I'd sign up. CW's got some great teen dramas. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I hear you. I get it. Uh, we could easily have a whole podcast about that. Just what the method 
is behind this, why everyone's jumping in and what we think might happen. Because eventually there's going to be a crash of some sort with yeah because they're, all they're not all going to be sustainable no and i've got some opinions on that other highlights from what's going to be on this brave new world probably read that in high school that's going to be on it uh some show called straight talk there's a whole bunch of you can go check them out uh the one that i care about psych the movie 2 is uh, Psych always aired on USA, but that's distributed by NBC Universal. So yep. they delayed. They said Psych Movie Two is coming at the end of this year onto USA. They've delayed that to launch in conjunction with the April 2020 release of Peacock. So you psychos, we have to watch it on Peacock apparently. And then there's Jimmy Fallon's going to have uh, a brand new talk show on there. There's a uh, a show called Rutherford Falls, which I believe is written by Michael Shore. I think it's got Ed Helms in it. Michael Shore did was in with The Office and Brooklyn and Nine and stuff like that. Yeah, Parks and Rec and um, The Good Place. And The Good Place. And then AP Bio. Shout out to my faves. And then uh, some of the classic NBC shows, which is where I think they're going to get the people coming over. It's going to be the exclusive streaming service for Friends. It's going to be exclusive streaming service for The Office. It will not be the exclusive streaming service for Parks and Rec. They will share that with other outlets. But yeah. the two ex- the two exclusives are the two biggest shows and the two biggest shows on Netflix right now, which The Office and Friends. Netflix is going to take a huge hit with this. Whether NBC is going to be successful or not, it, we're, we're yet to see. But Netflix is going to get ouched, which is why their stock today went... It, yeah. it dropped bad. I... I'm going to be sad to see The Office go because every few years or so, I'll go back and I'll re-go through the entire office. Yes. Yeah. I'm okay if Friends leaves. Honestly, right. um, gosh, maybe about a year ago because I, I, I initially was watching Friends in high school like every week live right. with some friends of mine. And I remember it being like uh, really popular and whatnot. And then I just kind of like lost interest maybe around season three, season four. Mm -hmm. And I didn't watch TV for a couple of years and came back and just like the idea of friends had no, no hold on me anymore. So I decided like a year and a half ago, maybe year, year and a half ago, I was going to try to watch friends all the way through Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, at least try to finish it. I got through like maybe like five, six, maybe even into the seventh season, maybe. Okay. And I just put it down again. And I was just like, no, I just... Not for you. Well, here's the thing. Like, if if other shows like The Office, Parks and Rec, Community uh, hadn't come out since then, How I Met Your Mother. Right. Uh, like, if, if that stuff hadn't come out... And I was watching it. Maybe I would find it funnier than it is. But like going back and watching it, I just didn't like because I I was watching stuff I hadn't seen before. Mm-hmm. I don't have the nostalgia for it. So I was just basing it off of the comedy. And I was like, a lot of it felt very dated. A lot of it felt very like if you really liked the show already, you could find stuff more funny than it really was. Okay. Because, like, you were kind of already predisposed to be like, oh, Phoebe's just kind of crazy. So everything she does is just kind of silly, and we laugh at her. Right. And I watched it. I was like, she's just weird, and it doesn't make any sense, and it doesn't seem to, like, move the narrative or the comedy along very much. And so I just I just struggled with it. And let's be honest. I think How I Met Your Mother is literally – the same type of show as friends. I mean, like it's right. way, way similar. Yeah. Except for me, Carter Bays and oh, what is it? Carter Bays and Craig, I think Nelson or whatever. And the, the guys that wrote that, their humor speaks to me more than the writers of friends. Uh, it, it's more relatable. Yeah. It, I, I felt it's uh, like, I would just laugh out loud at that show. I can go back and rewatch that show over and over and over again and find it extremely funny because just some of the stuff is inherently to me more sure more more laugh out loud worthy yeah but once again comedy's subjective though so yeah. like i know that's that's just me but yep well uh, anyway. i will stand up for all the super friends who also like friends i love friends 
I watch it every night before I go to bed. It's like one of my favorite shows. And I didn't watch it until t- when Emmy was born. We were like, we got nothing else to do while we're staying up all night. Let's watch Friends. <laughs> when it first right. came to Netflix, and I was like, let's watch it. And then we loved it. And I still really, I still really like Friends. And I get it, though. I totally get it. I understand your perspective. It is a certain kind of, I don't know. Because I like the characters, and I yeah. relate to Chandler, he's my guy, that uh, I can under, I can I can handle Ross when he's at his most cringy, annoying peak. Yeah. Um, but I get it. Anyway. Yeah. Circling back, what do you got? Oh, NBC's <laughs> Peacock coming April 2020 free if you have Comcast or if you, yeah, are a Comcast subscriber, but you got to pay an undetermined amount of money to watch it if you're me and you don't have Comcast. So mm. there you go. They should have called it NBC+. Plus. I think they did it on purpose to not do that. You know, here's the thing, though. If everyone just called their streaming service blank plus, then it, A, takes away from like the, you know, hey, Disney plus and ESPN yeah. plus and whatever, Hulu plus. Everyone just say, oh, you know, I've got Hulu or Disney or what. And you would just know that you're talking about the streaming stuff. Yep. Yep. It's my my two cents. It's easy. It's a great gimmicking gimmicky way of taking over someone else's name without you know getting sure. smacked with a lawsuit yep okay so this is i'm gonna i'm gonna nerd out a little bit super friends uh back in february i went to fan x and i got to meet tom welling who obviously played clark kent on smallville for 10 seasons i loved smallville it really paved the way for the Arrowverse that came later with Green Arrow and Flash and Legends of Tomorrow and Supergirl and everything. So coming up here in just like a couple months, we're going to get this big crossover. Every year in the Arrowverse, in the, for the last few years, we got these big crossover events where each episode around episode eight or nine uh, of each one of those four shows has a big crossover event and actors appear all over the place. And we're getting in the DC world, in the Arrow Arrowverse, the Crisis on Infinite Earths crossover event. It's a big storyline from the comics. They're going to be doing it here in these shows. And it has been confirmed that Tom Welling will be reprising his role as Clark Kent from his version of his earth. And on top of that, Erica Durant, who plays Lois Lane is going to be, be in the show as well, playing Lois Lane. So the cool thing is, is that this is going to now officially tie the Smallville world into kind of the Arrowverse in a way, how they're going to have this big crisis event and all these, you know, realities from all these different earths and, planes of existence are all going to kind of come crashing together. And I'm just excited because it's been obviously like, I don't know, like a decade since Smallville probably went off the air and we're going to get to see Lois Lane and Clark Kent from the Smallville era back together again. I think it's awesome. Oh man. I'm so that's cool as, as a Superman fan and as a Smallville fan, like, and I say fan, I have all the DVDs in my basement. Uh, like, I love it. I'm so excited for it. That's cool. I'm excited for you. And I think it's cool. Because, I mean, I've, I watch Smallville here and there. I never... Su- Superman wasn't always my guy. So yeah. Smallville didn't super appeal to me. But Tom Welling appeared appeal to me. <laughs> That's well, He's cool. The other, th- the other thing, too, is that Brandon Routh, who played Superman in Superman Returns plays a character on legends of tomorrow but i think also they're talking that he may show up playing a new version of superman in this inspired by uh, a graphic novel huh so interesting yep that's cool we're gonna gonna get all sorts of soups up in this infinite and crisis earth thing we got it (laughs) i'm excited sounds fun all right so uh don't you think we should remake Princess Bride? No. Well, you're not alone. 
Uh, so apparently, Sony Pictures CEO Tony Vinicarera says that, quote, very famous people whose names I won't use, end quote, want to redo Norman Lear's The Princess Bride. The classic of classics, The Princess Bride. Like, let's remake it. Let's let's do it better than it's been done. Mm, no. That's a shame. And of course, nobody wants to do that. Let's all pray that it doesn't happen. My main man, Carrie El- Elwes. I'd never know how to say Elwes. his last name. Elwes. Yes, Carrie Elwes uh, says in a tweet, there's a shortage of perfect movies in this world. It would be a pity to damage this one. Oh, Great response. We beautiful. all feel it. That movie is timeless. It's so funny, so well written, so well acted. It's great. So don't touch it, please. Just let it be what it is. And everyone will be happy. I mean, the fact that it's still quoted with relative frequency today should mean you should just leave it. Yeah. See, here's the problem. Is that it's an established IP. They've got a script already for it. So for them, it's just an easy money grab. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of the whole like why Disney's doing these kind of like live action or photo realistic mm-hmm. live action, you know, remakes of previous animated films. Yep. Cause they don't have to go and spend money on writing new music necessarily. I mean, maybe a song or two, but right. they, don't, they don't have to write new music. They don't have to go get a new script. They just have to uh, tweak it a little here and there. Mm. And I get that, but I mean, come on, like certain things you should just leave alone. I agree. This is one of those things you should just leave alone. However, I did think that about Aladdin, and we rented Aladdin this week, the live action movie, and yeah. we really liked it. Really? It was like, in my opinion, really good. Way better. My expectations were like, bah. So when I saw it, I was really surprised. I really, mm. really liked it. Anyway, just throw my two cents out there. Interesting, interesting. Yep. Uh, speaking of things that are being changed and altered, so as you may have known, Batman Day just barely passed us. It's the day we celebrate Batman and the, you know, the creation of Batman. Yes. So Fortnite, one of the most popular video games in the world, big battle royale game, for Batman Day and going on through, I think, October 6th, they're tra- changing one of their parts of their map. Uh, they're taking Tilted Town, and they're basically stylizing it so it looks like it's Gotham City. Mm-hmm. Landmarks include the Gotham City Police Department headquarters, Wayne Industries Tower, and the Monarch Theater. Players in the area will sport Batman cowls and get unlimited glider redeploys <laughs> that also happen to look like, you know, bat yeah. gliders. Um, there's going to be, like, challenges with sprays and gliders that you can do. There'll be in-game bat signals. You can defuse Joker-themed gas canisters. There's some kind of like Batman-looking skins that you can get. Um, It's not a big deal. Like, it's not going to be a huge thing. Like, it's just like this one area that's being transformed. It's not kind of like when Marvel did the crossover with Fortnite with the Thanos event. Right. And you could, like, you know, get the Infinity Gauntlet and wear it and, like, become all powerful or whatever. But it is something, and it is interesting, because they're finding another way to bring in something from pop culture into Fortnite. And while I don't play Fortnite, and it's not kind of my cup of tea, I do like that they try to do these sorts of things that are relevant and change up their game somewhat and give it a little more excitement. They're geniuses over there. They've made a game that's been relevant for years and years now. Right when I think that it's going to get dethroned by some other Battle Royale game, it does not. It's it's crazy. Yep. And some of us may be shielded if we're, you know, over the age of 25, let's say, or 30. Fortnite may not be big amongst our age group, our friends and family, but... Uh, in my work at my church, I worked with the youth, and that is all they talked about. That is yeah. all they played. And they have done an incredible job at keeping this game 
relevant with updates and cool new features and seasons and they just do it better than everyone else. And I agree with you. I've played it and I enjoyed it for the month that I played it and I haven't picked it up in a long time. However, yeah. good for them, man. That's I'm I'm impressed. I got to get you on that Apex Legends. That's what I downloaded I get it because you talked about it. I downloaded it. I still haven't p- tried it even a little bit. <laughs> well, season three is going to start on the first of October, so I should get you in a little bit and uh, walk you through it, and we should play some. And then if you like it, yeah, you, you know, you play this season. If not, you just jump in whenever you want, or not at all. There you go. I suck at those kinds of games, so I will be a liability. But that's eh, okay. So am I. But it's fun. <laughs> We'll have a good time. Okay. I like it. Yeah. Um, I've got something silly. <laughs> At least okay. I think it's silly. Hey, something else we've been asking for, y'all. Ryan Reynolds and Will Ferrell are teaming up for a musical reimagining of A Christmas Carol. Really? So that's really all we know <laughs> is it's Will Ferrell and Ryan Reynolds in a musical reimagining. I'm smiling just thinking about it because yep. I love Ryan Reynolds. Love, love, yep. love that man. And my 15, 16 year old self is loving that Will Ferrell is in this movie because Anchorman was like, that was high school for me. And that mm-hmm. was everything. Everything Will Ferrell did was so funny. So this is going to be something that I will want to watch. Well, I want to know more about it. (laughs) I definitely have the feeling like this is going to be borderline ridiculous, but probably a little bit awesome. Yeah. If not really awesome. It must have, for me, it must be decent if Ryan Reynolds is involved. And I say that because I trust Ryan Reynolds because he hasn't done a lot of crap. Will Ferrell has uh, done a lot of crap. In, he wasn't in the Green years, Lantern. In recent okay. years, in recent okay. years, when he become <laughs> when he became popular. Okay. Let's just throw Green Lantern out the window. Okay. Uh, That's an X-Men anomaly. X-Men Origins Wolverine. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you're hurting my case here. Now you're making me worry about the movie. But I mean, just friends and in the last, maybe like he did what, some of those years. rom-coms that were real funny. He hasn't and, done a lot that I thought I was like, oh, Ryan Reynolds is in this. It could be bad. Most of the time when I think Ryan Reynolds, I'm like, this is going to be awesome. I do enjoy Ryan Reynolds. I'm just jerking your chain. I'm excited about this movie. Will Smith. Mm. Will Smith. Whoa, that would be weird. Uh, Will Ferrell (laughs) and Ryan Reynolds and Will Smith. Getting jiggy with it. (laughs) Anyway, just silly news. Um, Look forward to that if you care or don't look forward to that if you don't. Nice, nice. Okay, so I've got something I think is silly. I think this whole announcement is silly. And when I read it, I kind of went, like, no, duh. Okay. Like, just duh. Like, we knew this was coming. <laughs> if I were using community, I'd be like, da doy, da doy. <laughs> okay, so, Britta. Yeah, right. She's the worst. Um, so, uh, the Lord of the Rings amazon prime show right that's going to be on the second day second age amazon studios finally came out and said we're finally ready to reveal that the lord of the rings prequel series has a filming location that's going to make the fans of the movies very happy we're returning once again to middle earth in new zealand Duh. And, I just kind of, and i just kind of went like where else would you go pittsburgh <laughs> like come on Hi. like <laughs> that just to me seems like an absolute, absolute like. That's like bottom the, of the barrel. If you don't film in New Zealand, you've already failed. Right. That's like saying, "Hey, we're filming Harry Potter on the set of Hogwarts this year." Yeah. You're like, okay. Well, yeah, that's where it takes place, you idiot. Yes. So, so I read that and I went, okay. This doesn't seem to me like, yeah, like this should be much of a thing. And we know that it's going to take place during the the second age. Mm -hmm. So this is going to take place a thousand years before the events of the Hobbit and the Lord of the Rings trilogies. Um, But then I saw this. This says that an earlier rumor suggested the series would focus on a young Aragorn. And I went, really? Wait a minute. (laughs) Wait a minute. In the movies, 
because this is based on the books. Do you know how old Aragorn's supposed to be in the movies? Like a hundred and eighty six. Oh, okay. He, so he's he's eighty six because he his race, uh, uh, the race of Numenor, his line okay. like, lives longer. And when he dies, he dies somewhere close to like two hundred or something. Mm-hmm. So, but that's at the his lifespan borders the very tail end of the third age and the beginning of the fourth age, the yeah. age of men. So we're going back a thousand years beforehand. So like the idea that we could even have this show focus on young Aragorn and there was people saying like, you know, who could play a young Aragorn? Who could look like a young Viggo Mortensen? I see these things and it's just like, um, they've said it's the second age. I'm no mathematician, but a thousand years per age and we're at the end of the third, like it just doesn't work out. Right. So... I'm glad they're not doing that. I'm glad that we're going to stay away from that. Honestly, there's only really one character or so that we potentially could see. And that's, it all depends on how much of the second age they show. And that's going to be Elrond. We could still see Elrond. Yep. So Hugo Weaving could come in. The Lady Galadriel could come in. Basically any of the elves potentially could be there. Right. Uh, except for maybe Legolas, because Legolas... They'll was, try you know, and shoehorn him in just like they did with The Hobbit. Y- yeah, but I just... <laughs> I hope not, but maybe. Yeah, I just kind of looked at that and I go, okay. Um, yeah, but we're not... Don't, don't, don't try to shoehorn Elijah Wood into this thing. You no. know, like, don't try... I mean, as much as I want to see Ian McKellen play Gandalf again... Wasn't really around during right. that time period. Right. So right. anyway. We'll see. Anyway, we're going back to New Zealand. I want to go to New Zealand. I want to live in New Zealand. It looks beautiful. I want to live in Middle Earth. Yeah. But no surprise. Just saying, yeah. no surprise. I agree. I agree. That's all I've got. Ooh, I have one <gasps> more. So me. I love a good Lego set. I love a good Star Wars Lego set. Super Friends, there is an upcoming Lego set that I want, (laughs) that I will not buy because it's ridiculously priced and it's Legos, but there's a Star Destroyer that is 4,784 pieces. Good gosh. This thing is gigantic. If you purchase it and you're part of like, you can like become part of like the VIP, you will earn the right i think they're saying like you get like double vip points it basically it works out if you buy this thing alone you'd earn enough vip points to buy two tickets to legoland <laughs> so basically like a 200 dollar. oh my gosh how much like is a 200 dollar thing Does okay so yes oh so dear. here's so here's the details 4784 pieces mm-hmm. which is 1500 pieces larger than that uh death star than that star than the previous like star destroyer oh, okay. thing that they'd done right uh, if you remember that they did a like one of these larger Millennium Falcons a while yeah, back ago that was like, I remember that there was like twenty seven hundred pieces yeah. more or whatever um, the star destroyer this monstrosity at almost five thousand pieces seven hundred dollars oh. oh. Seven hundred dollars. Seven hundred dollars. Yeah, and and let me tell you, it looks amazing. Yeah, but this thing is huge. I mean, it's huge. This is one of those things where, like, if you bought this and you put this together, you're not going to be playing with this thing. Like, no one's going to be like carrying it around. I, 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 I inherently look at these things and I say. How can I build this? And then how can I suspend them from the ceiling so it looks <laughs> yeah. like there's a space battle going yeah, yeah, on over yeah. my bed or yeah, something? Sure. Because that because you couldn't you really wouldn't want to put it on a shelf. Oh my gosh. It would be like the equivalent of like my my grandfather's era where they would build like those model planes and then they would hang them up from yeah. like rafters and stuff. Yeah. Like that that's what I would envision this. But at seven hundred dollars. Oh man. Ooh. I just did some ooh. quick math. That's about fourteen to fifteen cents per brick. Yeah, and you know how much those brick. bricks are are manufactured in China for? Less than one cent. <laughs> Guaranteed. It's ridiculous. 
Uh, wow. Okay. But it's cool. It is it way is cool, cool looking. cool. And if you're in... Look, the people big into Legos, they buy it and they don't blink yeah. at the price. And that's yeah, great. This is, a coll- this is a collector thing. That's awesome. Sure. My best friend bought the Millennium Falcon and that thing was crazy expensive as well. Mm-hmm. Well into the hundreds of dollars. And he put it all together and he was all proud. And I'm proud of him. Way to go, Charles. But I mean, I could see him buying this too. Really? He's one of those kind of guys. Not that it's bad. It's good. No, it's just... But not I, not my thing. I'll buy like love, a Luke Skywalker speeder. I do have a Lego Luke Skywalker speeder down here with a Tusken Raider. And that thing was like 15 bucks. And that's my cap. My kids last Christmas bought me a TIE fighter. And it's still in the box upstairs because I told them like we do it together as a project. Sure. And I just keep forgetting about oh, it. Man. And like every now and again, they're like, Daddy, Daddy, can we do the Lego? I'm like, we got 10 minutes till we have to be somewhere. No, we don't got time for that right now. Right. Anyway. Yeah. It's been almost 10 months <laughs> since <laughs> I got it. So I got to put that together. But then the question is like, where do I put that thing? Ugh, I'm know. running out of space. Yeah. And Bre- and Breed and I have had a conversation about like this big bookshelf you can see behind me. We've got like, we've got some, you know, nerd and pop culture kind of stuff on there. We also have books on there yep. and, you know, some pictures. And lately she's like, maybe we just like give in and like we put a lot of our like nerdy pop culture kind of stuff up on there and we just like really give in all the way and just yeah. kind of decorate our whole living room yeah the family room kind of in that stuff because we got some sign posters and some stuff and i was like hmm maybe yeah but i'm kind of waiting to see how serious she really is <laughs> because Can change I, yeah yeah i don't know i don't want to like be halfway through the process and then she's like i changed my mind like well, too bad. I repainted in here so everything looked, you know, awesome. And yeah. Now we're stuck. Right, right. So anyway, that was the last thing I had. Nice. Expensive Legos. <laughs> All right. So last week, Matt, we asked a very serious question. This was like more serious than any question we've ever asked. Oh, yes. We asked the Super Friends, if you <laughs> could take any TV or movie and adapt it into a Broadway musical, what would it be and why? What would the music be? Yep. And we got a answer. Yep, you heard me right. We got one this week. So apparently either two things happened. Not fans of Broadway. Not fans of seeing TV or movie adapted to Broadway. Or two, there was a lot of stuff going on this weekend and people just missed the question of the week. Yeah, I'm hoping it's the latter, not the first. But we did get one answer. I can almost always rely on Peter. Peter Christensen to come through. My man. So Peter Christensen over on the email, fortofnerd at gmail.com, says, Dear nerds, congrats, Stu. Italy sounds amazing, and I love to hear stories about people living their best life. If we extrapolate forward 22 months, Stu will have 3.1 additional wives. I mean, if he continues on the you know schedule that he was on, yes. Uh, for Katina's sake, I hope not. That would be a little weird. That would be odd. But, you know, he would definitely be living a version of his best life. Is that sure, the case? I guess. Uh, he says, he, Peter goes on, he says, I know the feeling about kids growing up. My oldest is in high school and I'm coaching soccer for my youngest. Which is crazy because I wow. think Peter and I are like exactly the same age. And I've got a five and a six-year-old. Yeah. Admittedly, I started a little later, but still. He says, I was too cool for the Muppets growing up, so I'm not emotionally attached to them, <laughs> along with Pokemon and the Lion King. I thought that I thought the Muppets from 2011 was boring, and I really liked <sighs> Muppets Most Wanted, but I can see how it's like Man of Steel for Muppet fans. Yeah, Which is interesting, because sort of. most people loved the 2011 Muppets, and didn't really care much yeah, for Muppets Most Wanted. Yeah, that's true. That is, that is true. So it's kind of a flip-flop. He says, I'm not big into musicals, but I think Community would be <laughs> perfect. Forgive me if they did make a musical episode and I forgot it. They made so many genre episodes and showed their flexibility. Okay, then this is, this is Peter's genius here. And you know that Dean Pelton already has costumes in his and Jeff's sizes. 
<laughs> oh, yeah, he does. So good. He says, my wife thinks that there's a great Mamma Mia style musical made out of the songs by Pink. And I think she's on to something. Oh. Cheers, Peter Christensen. Okay. I love that Dean Pelton <laughs> has not only outfits for him, but outfits for Jeff Winger as well. At all times. At all times. Uh, so, yes, Super Friends, thank you. Actually, no. Not just Super Friends, Peter. You're the man. Thank you, Peter, the Super Friend, for uh, responding this week. Uh, Super Friends, if you want to respond like Peter, you can always get in your answers at fordanerd at gmail.com. That's our email address. We're on Twitter at fordanerd, Facebook, which is facebook.com slash fordanerd, and on Instagram, fordanerd. There's a little bit of a pattern here. You basically can just type in fordanerd and find us on the web. Mm. We also have a website. You can go there. You also can leave us a voicemail, 801-477-7687. Woo! Get those answers in. And uh, we'll definitely try to make sure that uh, we have time. Also, Matt, I think we need to do something we haven't done in a while. We need to do an Ask Us segment where they ask us questions and we answer their questions. Oh, yeah. We haven't done that in a while. Maybe we should do that this week. Cool. That'd be cool. I like that idea. Yeah. All right. So, uh, Matt, Super Friends can help us out. Besides answering our question of the week, how can they help us out this week? So this week, what they can do is they can buy a Coke Zero, and then they can buy a Diet Coke, and they can tell me which one they like most. I love Coke Zero. The other thing they can do while they're deciding in a blind, preferably a blind taste test here, uh, they're going so they to take off their blindfold. Oh wait, okay. no, no, no! Okay. Between their palate cleansing experience. Uh-huh. They will take off the blindfold and grab their nearest device because I know there's one within three feet of you at all times. Sure, Just sure. pull it out, get on to iTunes, give us a subscription, leave us reviews, tell us how much you enjoy the podcast, and also we're open to your criticisms as well. Tell us what you want to hear more about and what you... Uh, what you like, what you don't like. So uh, hit us up on that iTunes, leave us a review, and also don't forget Coke Zero versus Diet Coke, the ultimate throwdown. <laughs> Tell me what you like, zero calories. Uh huh. Okay. Mm-hmm. Apparently, you've had a conversation recently about this with someone, I'm assuming. I'm always thinking about Coke or Diet Coke versus Coke Zero. I'm almost always thinking about it. I can tell you I like neither. Well, I'm not a big Coke guy anyway. Oh, man. I'm a Coke doctor, head, you know what I mean? <laughs> Do- Dr. Pepper, which coming from Texas, I, I would know. think you'd be into it's Dr. Pepper. It's a sin. Pepper. I get it. Okay? I get mm-hmm. it. It's a sin. But the I like Coke Zero. stars are bright, big at night, <laughs> deep in the heart of wow. Dr. Pepper. You know the song. I'm proud of you. Come on, man. I've seen Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Oh, my gosh. That's <laughs> where... Oh, no. If that's your opinion of Texas and particularly San Antonio, I am so sad. There's no basement uh, in the Alamo. Alamo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yep. Anyway. Yep. <laughs> thanks, Super Friends, for listening. Uh, all right, Matt. So... We, we had a conversation. So, like, in all fairness, we had an idea of what we were going to talk about tonight. And as we got, like, oh, like literally right before we started recording, we realized that, like, I don't know, just that topic just wasn't going to work. We were kind of trying to force something, and it just wasn't feeling right. And then we kind of stumbled onto this conversation that I, I think most parents, especially parents like us that are into nerd and pop culture that are into these different fandoms and sci-fi and whatnot, you have this conversation. And I think, I think it'd be good to, to kind of talk about what we think on this issue and then hear from some of our super friends. So you got Emmy, Emmy's two, two and a half, three, two and a half. Like she's coming up on three this March. Mm-hmm. And I know that because she was born on my birthday. So <laughs> yeah, Emmy and I yeah. share a birthday. So, Emmy's coming up on three, and I'm a little older than three. Charlie's coming up on seven this December. Yeah. Jackson uh, Jackson will be five next April. And so, you know, talking about raising kids, like, at what point do you 
start trying to imprint on your children, like the fandoms that you enjoy. Right. So, yeah. So let me ask you this, like Harry Potter. Let's start there. Let's start with Harry Potter. Good place to start with my family. Uh, we love Harry Potter in our family. Breed and I have read both the books. We've seen all the movies. Mm-hmm. We know a tons of trivia, yada, yada, yada. We definitely feel like we're Potter heads in our family. Sure. At what age do you think you start like trying to imprint upon your kids and like get your kids into Harry Potter? Yeah, Harry Potter's a trickier one than some of the other because I've already exposed Emmy and introduced her to a couple of things that I'm sure we'll talk about here in a minute. But with Harry Potter, it's tough. And I'm sure Jesse would have probably a different opinion than me. I, I know that she does. We've talked about it. And for me, it's not necessarily an exposure to like scary things or dark things because Harry Potter uh-huh. is scary and Harry Potter is dark. It can be. Yeah. Um, but it's more to me about Harry Potter is so important to Jesse and I. We grew up with reading the books as like we've talked about before on the podcast. He was my age. Yeah. And so there is such an investment there that for me, it's an appreciation thing where it's like, should I read it to her? as she begins to understand how to read, right? And she can kind of follow along. And our mother-in-law always gets us every year the the newest yep. illustrated version of the book. These massive, right? There's tons of illustrations. And we kind of go through the book as she's learning to comprehend and understand. I say no, Jesse says, I th- yeah. So for me, it's definitely going to be books before movies. Yep, as it yep. pertains to Harry Potter. And for me, I would like it to be at a point where she can read it on her own and comprehend it on her own. But that's just my preference. So Harry Potter's unique in in a couple of ways. So first of all, when J.K. Rowling wrote it, she kind of decided like, you know, the earlier books were a little easier reads. Yeah, totally. They were a little repetitive in some parts. I mean, like the first chapter of... Of Harry Potter's like, Harry Potter's, you know, not an ordinary boy. Yeah. And then like the first chapter of the second book, Harry Potter's not an ordinary boy. I was like, okay, got it. Right. Like it's felt a little repetitive, but the books are meant for a young adult audience. Mm. But like as the books progressed, they continue to get a little bit longer, have a little bit more kind of grown up concepts and you know, story. And so by time kids that started reading Harry Potter at kind of like that age when they could maybe, you know, read and understand maybe like eight ish, nine ish. Yeah. By time they finished everything, like their late teens, early twenties. Right. Right. Yep. So like it was, and she kind of had that idea, like there's kind of a design to it to like, you would grow up with, you know, with yes. reading these books. And as you got older and matured more, so did the books. Yeah. So a year or two ago, Breed and I tried to see, like, if Charlie could watch the first movie. And not a good idea. Yeah. Like, it, it was too too much for him, too scary. Mm. We got to the troll in the bathroom scene. Yeah. And it just was way too much. So we kind of had to back off. I'm like, okay. We're not going to do Harry Potter. Charlie's six now. He'll be seven. He's reading, but he's reading like these like, you know, little books where like today we were reading with him and there's words that he gets that are a little more complex words. Like I'm trying to think like the word together, like he figured that out Yeah, and he figured out um, packed because it's like little stories to talk about like you know, this kangaroo and packing all this stuff and like he figured out the word packed and whatnot. But then like, a word like away, he would still have a little bit of trouble with, or the word what, because it's so similar to a lot of other sight words he knows. Yes. So like, we want him to read Harry Potter yeah. because I would think if he starts getting into that, but I feel like he's still just a little too young. Right. I feel like he needs a good, maybe year, year and a half more before he'd really be kind of ready to start with the first book. Yeah. But of course, like the, the super kind of fan in me, of this, like, I want him to get into Harry Potter so bad. Yeah. But I also feel like if I push it, it's not going to matter to him. He's not going to maybe understand all of it because I'll push too hard, too fast, 
and it's not going to catch hold in his heart the way I would want it to. Right. Yeah. And I think that's a balancing act, right? Yeah. It's almost like I want to when it become when it comes to Harry Potter, I almost want to shield her from it. And then like when the moment's right, like Jesse and I walk into her room, it's just dramatic moment. We hand her a book. We say, this means a lot to your mom and I. Do, 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 yeah, exactly. Do, do, she picks do, do, it up do, do, and the light do. shines on her and the wind <laughs> blows. And right. she just knows. She's like, oh my gosh, this is so great. That's almost something as dramatic as that, but not literally as dramatic, but being like, okay, Emmy, you've heard us talk about Harry Potter. You know, you're however old you know, you're nine or 10, let's say this book's important to us. Just uh, give it a read. Tell us what you think. And we've got seven of them if you want to read them and they get really long. Yeah. See, I think, I think the whole like reading it as a family together is a good idea. Okay. I can get that. Because with something like that, you can, you can really show your love for it and make it exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And, and if they're a little younger, then maybe you're doing more of the reading. But I, th- I think, especially with that series, like if, if Emmy can read it, or like when Charlie and Jackson get to that age, mm-hmm. if they can read it along with us, I think that's going to help a lot. I get that. But, I get that. So, so Star Wars for me is a big one, right? Yes. And I've started indoctrinating my boys since like day one with Star Wars. But Star Wars is different than something like Harry Potter because Harry Potter – is a medium i mean there's the movies but the movies you got to be older for but like it's a medium where you have to read so like your kids have to be old enough to read yeah but like with star wars like you can watch the movies the originals they can be on but then you also have the animated stuff like star wars rebels Mm -hmm. and resistance and the clone wars and now like disney does you know they do this with some other things but they have like the little like little lego mini shorts or whatever and so, like, I feel like Star Wars has always had that element of, like, even in the movies, like, you know, the Ewoks were meant to be for kids. Mm-hmm. To try to, like, you know, give the kids something, which, of course, then became the Gungans and <sighs> Phantom Menace. Ugh. Um, I'm, I feel bad that I even brought that up. <sighs> um, but I feel like Star Wars has a definite easier entry point for young kids. What do you think about that? I completely agree 100%. I mean, Emmy, Emmy has had Star Wars onesies as a baby. I've exposed her to. She has like she found it. I tried to read to her. There's a there's like a little book called Daddy's Little Princess, but it's yeah. Darth Vader and Princess Leia, and it's this yeah, cute yeah, yeah. little it's this cute little animated like little storybook thing. And she's just recently, in the past maybe two weeks, she found it and she knows about lightsabers because I've got a lightsaber in my room that we turn on, turn the lights off. She knows about lightsabers and she knows about stormtroopers. So you're to your point, yes, I've already told her about these things and who's a bad guy. And she, I mean, kids inherently kind of understand the good and the bad, right? They see Darth Vader and they don't usually go, oh, it's a good guy. I mean, right. she kind of understands so um, I agree with you. When I saw Disney Plus was coming out and that it was going to have, to your point again, Star Wars Rebels, which I couldn't talk. I just love that love it. series. Oh, I love My it. My so favorite good. of all the Star Wars series. And the Clone Wars, which I haven't really given a fair chance to. I got real excited because I was like, Emmy would probably watch that stuff with me. And uh, so I agree with you. Now, with the kind of the core series, though... Yeah, the core movies. That one's that one's a little bit different because you and I, obviously, and probably 900% of people listening to this podcast, it's an important series yeah. to them, particularly the original trilogy. And so I want the moments that are impactful to be impactful. But at the same time, I also know that those moments that are impactful – are still impactful impactful to me at 31 when I've seen it a hundred times. And I mm-hmm. think deeply about, you know, what it means and how these things apply to my life and why that's important to me, right? It, it doesn't take away from my experience that I had when I was young because I didn't grow up going to the movie theaters. I, I knew that, spoiler alert, you know, Darth Vader was Luke's dad. I've known right. that my whole life. And so there wasn't a moment like everybody else who saw it where it was like, ah, 
I think most people are exposed to that. So I, I still think that's going to be a lower entry for Emmy. I think she'll see that before she reads Harry Potter. I think she'll see it at, you know, seven when she starts to show interest in wanting to watch a live action movie with dad, you know, yeah. like I, I could see that happening. Yeah, I definitely, I definitely feel the, the barrier to entry with Star Wars because there is more stuff for kids is easier. My kids have seen parts of the original trilogy, not mm -hmm. the whole thing through because admittedly, like, you know, compared to the pacing of some other movies nowadays, it's a right. little slower. Yeah. And so it's going to be a harder time. But if they're around a lot of Star Wars stuff, I mean, they've got Star Wars t-shirts and they know who Chewbacca is and what he sounds like. And, right. you know, r2d2 and c3po and they've got lightsabers and it's like there's all the other things that are kind of out there yes. that like help tie them in so i think by time my kids are probably maybe like nine and ten i feel like that would be a good age to get them to watch the original trilogy because they'd be able to sit down watch it from start to finish yeah you know at least a film start to finish and have some more you know more of the adult kind of concepts about what's going on versus the you know, hey, we just want to see some lightsabers and some fighting. Yep. Yep. So. Yep. Here, okay, so here's a big one for me that I'm trying to kind of get this going, but I'm also trying very carefully, and that's Lord of the Rings. Mm -hmm. So, Lord of the Rings, the films, and the books, my kids are way too young to start on. That's, they're just way too young. But The Hobbit... That book was written and meant to be a children's book. Professor Tolkien wrote that to be a book for his kids. And I have started, I've got to get back to it, but I started reading uh, like about a chapter or so a night to the kids. Sometimes it'd be a little less because, you know, kids are kids yep. and it'd be difficult. But like I would read it and then I would kind of like summarize what I read at the end because, you know, the language that uh, Professor Tolkien uses is definitely a little more classy than the language we use every every day. Sure. So, so I, I've been reading The Hobbit, and we're kind of getting along there. They're in Mirkwood Forest right now, the last time we left off. And so, like, I'm trying to read that, but then I've also let them watch the 1977 animated Rankin and Bass <laughs> yeah. Hobbit cartoon. Yeah. And they've seen that. And so, like, I'm trying to start with The Hobbit and really kind of get them interested at an early age in The Hobbit so that when they get to maybe, like, around 12, 13, I can say, hey, if you really like The Hobbit, here's one of Dad's favorite book series that actually kind of continues on this story that starts in The Hobbit right. and picks picks up and goes on later and have them read it because I think anything younger than maybe about 12 or 13 as far as needing to read this or even watch it. But for me, uh, for me, I have to have them read it first sure. before they watch it. I think anything younger than that would be too young. Everything would go over their head. They wouldn't care for it. Right. And you'd run the risk of like them never wanting to go back to it. Yeah. I get that. I, uh, I have a different opinion on Lord of the Rings and that's because I just never I could not get into the books it was just too slow for me really? I I just it was it was tough I made it through Fellowship and Half of Two Towers and mm. that was it and uh, the movies I love and I and I I should probably go back and, and read those books now being I wonder... 31 instead of being 15 right I wonder if the Two Towers was hard for you because the first half of the book, I mean, the the book's split into two parts, and the timeline, they run simultaneous, but you only follow one group for the first half of the book, and then you follow the other group for the second half. So in the first half, you follow Frodo, Sam, and Gollum mm. all the way up to Shelob's lair. And then the other half, you follow Merry Pippin. You alternate between Merry and Pippin being taken by the orcs, and then Aragorn, Gimli, and Legolas. Right. And so maybe, maybe like you felt like, um, I, I want to know about what's going on over here, but I'm stuck over here. Yeah. Or I want to know what's, you know, happening on this side, but you once again, like, you know, that felt like a, you know, eons ago. Yeah. Or something. It, I don't that know. could have been it. 
I, mm. I don't remember what exactly did it to me because I didn't even try to read them until I'd seen Fellowship, I don't think. I'm trying to remember the timeline of my life, and it really gets muddy. <laughs> yeah. As does everyone's. So for me, eh, you know, uh, read, you have to, Jesse again, right? Jesse's read him. Jesse, Jesse's the reader in the family, okay? So obviously this is a... This is a team sport raising a family. Um, sure, sure, sure. I'm in charge of Star Wars. She's probably going to say she's in charge of Harry Potter and jointly probably a Lord of the Rings. For me, look, this is going to be controversial, I'm sure. But I'm going to say 10 years old, she's watching the movies with me. Hmm. Maybe she'll have nightmares. Maybe it'll toughen her up. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe she won't. <laughs> I don't know. But I was, I mean, 2001 is when these came out. I mean... My sister saw them with me, and they were nine and t- uh, ten. I was thirteen, so for me, it's not. And maybe my family let me watch PG thirteen movie. I mean, they did. I watched Jurassic Park when I was like young, young, young. Mm. And uh, anyway, my thing would be, hey, Emmy, you're ten. Let's rock and roll. Let's let's put this in and see what you think. That would be. That's just me. But yeah. then again, we're also the, the the. I mean, she sleeps with the horrifying stuffed animals from the Nightmare Before Christmas and can't stop watching that movie. Right. She just it, that that kind of stuff. She likes it. She's a dark soul. <laughs> <laughs> what about like the Marvel MCU stuff? Whenever they're interested, and I say that yeah. because, I mean, it. it for them to really understand what's going on, you've got to be like, sometimes I think you got to be a mastermind because, and you got to really care. There's a lot of moving parts and it took me a good six, seven years into the MCU for me to really care and to understand, Oh, this is all working together toward something bigger. Right. Right. And you know, so when they're young, they're just going to be fun movies for them to watch. And so for me, there's not a barrier of entry there, particularly for me with Spider-Man, right? Emmy, you interested in Spider-Man? Yes. Okay. Let's watch Into the Spider-Verse first because that's an animated movie. And then let's rock and roll with whichever ones she wants. Tobey Maguire, Andrew Garfield, Tom Holland. Pick your poison. Yeah. So I, my boys have both seen Spider-Man Into the Mm Spider-Verse. And I was a little worried about showing them that because this was like last you know, December. So they probably watched it in March-ish of this year because it does deal with death. And there's some questions that's going to arise and how to explain that and mm-hmm. how to, you know, have that kind of conversation about death with my children. Um, but Disney also on like their Disney now app has like these like little like Spider-Man shorts and rocket and Groot shorts. Oh. And so they're, like two or three minutes long. And so, the kids have kind of started getting some of the Marvel stuff in this like little animated shorts um, that they'll watch. And so I think that by time they get old enough to want to start watching like, you know, Captain America and Iron Man and Thor, like they're going to have kind of a concept and an idea of who the characters already are. Yeah. And so I, I think that's a good way to like, Once again, to kind of like hook them young into that fandom and get them to appreciate it. But like at the same time, like I couldn't just go toss them in like in a year or two into like Infinity War and Endgame. No, you don't Like, you know, you're going to, you're going to want to have to build them up kind of like the MCU did with here's the intro movies into the four or five characters that make up the original Avengers team. And yep. here's the big mashup, you know, da, 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 and then kind of like continue to let the sprawl go on. Yep. Yep. I agree. It, it is kind of Star Warsian in the way that you can envelop them into it early without them completely understanding everything that's going on with the larger story arcs. Yep. Um, yeah. So changing gears a little bit, what do you think about like popular TV comedies? Like we've talked about this, like big things like Parks and Rec, The Office, Community, Seinfeld, uh, you know, stuff like that. Like I find a lot of that stuff to be really, 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 really funny. Mm -hmm. And I think my boys would too. But I was trying to think of that and I was like, a lot of the humor is either adult type of humor Mm -hmm. 
uh, not like I don't mean like, like dirty, dirt, but just like dirty or risque. But like, yeah, like yeah. the office. The office is really funny because it takes place in an office environment. If you're a kid, <laughs> you know, yeah. you're a teenager. You're not going to have those life experiences to understand why everyone knows a Toby in real mm-hmm. life or why everyone knows a Creed at their mm-hmm. office mm-hmm. and like how close to reality that is. And so therefore you understand the humor in the situation. So like some of those things, I wonder like, are those things that our kids are going to have to be closer to adulthood to really understand sure. and really get? And if so, are they still going to be relevant 20 years from now? They will be relevant in my house. Um, <laughs> <laughs> depending on what it is, I, I, this one, I don't know, 12 years old. I, I think depending on which show it is that I'm watching <laughs> and how I'm feeling as a parent in 12 years, how lenient I'm feeling. Cause you're right. Some of it is a little adult, yeah. uh, in in the subject matter as well, right? I mean, not so much language, but more, you know, the sexual content of things. And it just kind of depends on <laughs> how much I want to expose my sweet children to. But for me, I don't know, around 12 is probably okay, depending on what it is. For like The Office, I mean, 12? I think 12, 12 think seems so? right. Yeah. You think that you think you're. I don't you think, think Emmy at twelve will have enough like life experience to understand. No, of course not. But I don't work in an office either, and I haven't really ever worked in an office, to be mm. completely honest. Um, but I I started watching The Office, and I was, you know, when it started airing, and I was fourteen or fifteen years old. Okay. And I was the person that was spreading the message and the joy of Michael Scott to my friends and family who weren't watching it. And so, uh, you know, if, if at 14 and 15, I can understand it. And when I, again, to the point, right, my life is at home and then I go to church and interact with these kids. They're all talking about the office, which is hilarious to me that all these years later, they're still talking about it, uh, that, that they understand the humor in some respect. So certainly early teens for at least – for me, I think that that they'll they'll be able to understand it. The Office, I say, Community to me is a special special show that I can laugh and then I can cry, and it, to me, it's impactful. That's the difference between. And I've written literally, I've written essays about Community just to myself on my laptop <laughs> because that's how important that show is to me. It is like a life changing experience. Yeah. So for something like community, it's one thing to get the humor. It's a whole different thing to get the human element behind it and the lesson that's to be learned from each thing. So, you know, maybe at 13 and 14, they'll think it's funny, but then at 23, they'll understand that there's so much more to that show than yeah. it just being funny. I get that. I get that. I don't know. It's it's just an interesting thing. Uh, you know, to think about, like, you know, we were kind of talking earlier uh, before the podcast, like, we want our kids to like the same things we like, to to at least have yeah, this similar interest. Yeah, because you want to be able to sit around with your children and, like, talk about these things and laugh about stuff and have shared experiences with yep. them. And obviously, you know, things are going to come along that are going to, you know, be big touchstones in kind of nerd and pop culture, you know, going forward that, Mm -hmm. you know, we don't even know yet. We haven't even seen yet that we'll, we'll make connections with our kids. But like, I could sit down with my mom and dad and watch Star Wars. And even though I watched as a kid, you know, they watched it when they were having kids or right before they were having kids. And so like two different experiences when we first watched it, but like over the years, you know, it's something we've we've all seen. Same thing with like the Harry Potter stuff. Like we're all big, you know, Potterheads in our family, and we've all read the books and we've all seen the movies. And it's like you know a shared thing we can talk about and we can remember like what it was like standing in line for like midnight shows of Harry Potter right. before you could you know Reserve rearrange seat. your seats and, yeah. Yeah, and all that stuff. Yeah. So you know you're standing in line. I mean, I I remember going to, I think. Order the Phoenix with my mom and like standing in line for like 
three hours yeah. before before it you know opened yep. up so we could get a good seat. So like, I, I just it's it's a curious conversation to think about. Like you know how how do you share your love, your passion of something with your children, and at what age and in what way so that they capture that without you just being like, no, you got to watch this because right. Dad really wants you to. Yeah. It's, it's a tricky a, question, man. It, it is. It really, really is. And that's what I want to hear from our super friends this week. Super friends, what are your plans? What's your, your game plan? What's, what's your, you know, what's your agenda? Like how, how do you plan on getting your kids into your nerd and pop culture passions? Whatever that may be, whether it's TV movies, whether it's, I don't know, video games, board games, uh, Broadway musicals, I, I don't know, whatever it may be, books. Um, what's your what's your plan? H- how are you going to do this? I want to know because some of you have kids that are older than me. Uh, like Peter was saying, like he's his oldest is in high school now, and uh, you know, like how did how did you manage that? I want to know. Give me your knowledge. <laughs> Bring that to me. Uh, let us know, and we'll talk about that next week. And then uh, maybe, maybe Matt will have a baby next week. By maybe. Next week. We don't know. Let's hope so. I just want this to be done. <laughs> Jesse wants it's, it to be done more than me. I tell you that, I, man. That poor I love, lady. I <laughs> love you say, I just want this to be done. It's only the <laughs> beginning. I want the pain to be done for Jesse. That's what I want. Poor uh, girl. I got you. Mm. I got you. Well, Matt, let's uh, let's talk next week. Let's make some plans in case uh, Lando does arrive. Right but we'll we'll get it. We'll get that all squared away. Super friends from all of us here at the Fortress of Nerditude to all of you out there, wherever you may be. May the force be with you, always. <laughs>